Okay, don't make fun of me for this, but I had this epiphany over the weekend. Um, I'm in the boys' bedroom and this is our storage closet, AKA my Monica closet behind me. And I've been thinking through how I wanna organize it, what we're gonna store in here and how to just keep it from turning into a disaster again. And I realized that the only way to keep a space organized to like put organization in place and have it continue to function and work and not get overwhelmed again is to have very low inventory and not just low inventory that's not enough you have to have very low inventory and when we see these shows and these beautifully organized spaces if you look at the amount of stuff that is actually being stored in there it is very little and so i think that's where i've messed up in the past is i kind of thought like well i can keep all the stuff and organize it and then it should stay that way right especially if i get the containers and i label it and so today we are going to work on this closet <laughs> like i said my monica closet <laughs> uh yeah um I, I want to get some new organization in place. I want to paint it. I went to Ikea. I got some things. And so I think we can lower the inventory even a little bit more, make this space super functional, and then it doesn't ever have to look like this <laughs> ever again. All right. So you'll notice that this video is a little bit longer so we can work alongside each other. I have a whole playlist of longer videos, um, but we have a few goals. I have Corbin's down here too. My number one helper, aren't you? <laughs> um, so you can see. There he is. Awesome. My goal for this is to declutter it. And then I have some new organization we're going to put in place. Let's get working. And then I'll tell you kind of what's wrong with the shelves that are in here that I'm learning. I'll share some of my best tips as we go through it. And um, do know that if you have time or energy limitations, you can absolutely tackle a project like this in five, 10 and 15 minute chunks. And so often we think, especially for something like this, like, oh, I have to have a full weekend or week or something, right? You can absolutely do it in small chunks. I, I have a video where I did that in our basement. And so I'll link to that as well. So even if you don't have big chunks of time, it's okay. We can get through a space like this. All right. So number one, I always like to start with the floor. Um, it's very unsettling to our brains when there's a lot of stuff on the floor. And so um, whether you're in a storage space or a bedroom, um, starting on the floor is the best place to start. So Corbin, why don't we work? Um, are you, <laughs> there are Legos on the floor, but I just, you can pull out anything you want to keep. Otherwise I have the broom and dustpan and we're just going to sweep it all up. Yeah, so. we can sweep all this up. I took some of the stuff out that we don't want to have. But okay. All of this you can get rid of. I'm okay, gonna... awesome. All right, why don't we pull the suitcases out? Corbin, I, I'm aware of not just loading up their bedroom um, with all of this stuff, then but clean our bedroom. yeah, <laughs> no one can walk in here. It's not a big room to begin with, right? Yeah. But I think we need to make a little space <laughs> for him to be able to work. Wow, that made a lot of space. That did make a lot of space. Okay. So we're going to work on getting the floor all cleaned up, man. And actually, I think this box here oh yeah i have a box of workbooks here that's gonna have to go out to the office so we'll get that out there oh, i think this is dad's empty. extra wedding room. oh yeah it's the one he cracked okay we will keep oh, that then. wait he cracked one. yeah i'll put this in our memory box so okay. our, our our memory boxes actually live in this space so this is our only storage closet in our whole house we only have three closets in our house our hall closet the girls have one in their bedroom um and then this so this houses office supplies our memory bins some extra homeschooling stuff so that's that's the stuff i want to prioritize in this space and this is like a random bin of stuff you know Carmen, i don't want to i'm not going to go through this right now yeah let's get the floor all cleaned up okay. and then um and then we'll start going through this stuff better okay let me grab i did have the broom where did i put it yeah, isn't that cool? That was a gift. That's where it also works as a broom. Okay. You'll also see like puzzle pieces, little toys, markers. We're just throwing it all away right now. We don't have enough hours in the day to try and sort all of this stuff out. So we just need to make quick progress and we're going to end up tossing a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm even going to pull out any Duplos though. I do like to keep those. So. 
Now, throughout this process, I always want you to know that you get to decide how much time you want to spend on sorting things out, making sure they get donated to just the right place. I know for us right now, I don't have the bandwidth to sort Legos and puzzle pieces and markers. And so that's why you're seeing me just throw it away because I literally don't, I, I just couldn't <laughs> right now. That would keep me from doing a project like this. But even as Corbin is here helping me, I know he loves peaceful spaces. He loves when things are in order. He loves when it's low inventory so he can help take care of it. He really enjoys that. And so I want that for him. I want every space in our house to feel peaceful, not just for him, um, for all of us, <laughs> right? We all desire that, um, even though some of us are more attached to things than others. And so you do have permission just to throw stuff away if you need to right now to get our house back to square one. The problem is that we have overconsumed. We've overconsumed for too long. And so our houses show it, right? And we think that the only way to right this wrong is to donate everything and to make sure linens go to pet shelters and, um, you know, craft supplies go to retirement centers and all. We have these like great ideas. And if you are able to do that and you have the capacity to do that right now, please do that. That is beautiful and awesome. And it really does make this problem of overconsumption better, right? But if you don't, like if you don't have that kind of bandwidth right now, and if it's really menial, inconsequential things like Legos and puzzle pieces, you have permission just to get a black trash bag and to sweep it up and toss it in. It would have taken an hour, if not more, to sort everything out that was on the floor here, but instead we could sweep it up in five minutes, be done with it, and move on to the next step. So next step, uh, I'm trying to figure out what the next step should be. You know, people are always asking like, how can you juggle so many projects? And how can I tackle a whole storage closet in a weekend? Well, I would say that the quality of your sleep is probably pretty high on that list there. And so today's video is sponsored by Helix. They have some exciting new things coming out that we want to tell you about. But first, Helix are premium mattresses customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped to your door. So we love that Helix has taken all of their sleep knowledge and they've put it into a sleep quiz that is actually very helpful. Uh, what sleep position do you normally sleep in? Side or stomach. Do you ever wake up with any back pain? Yes. You used to. Oh, I'm so, oh <laughs> yeah, no, that's I thought, yeah, yeah, okay. right, buddy. Yes, so Tom yes. used to wake up with back pain all the time. I honestly didn't think much of it until I started waking up with back pain too. She's like, eh, who cares? I just thought he abuses his body. And you know, maybe you've done this too. Where you're like, oh, I'm getting older. That's just how I feel now. No, it might actually be your mattress. Well, okay. Maybe. Uh, do you like a more firm mattress, a little bit softer? What What's your preference there? Firm. Yeah, we both like our mattress a little bit firm. So you go online, you take the sleep quiz, they match you with your perfect mattress. So we were matched with the... Dusk Lux. Lux. We've had it for three years now. And I love it. Love it so much. And so it comes rolled up in a box. It's delivered right to your door. Shipping is included if you're in the US. And then you get their 100 night sleep trials. And then after that, you get a 10 year warranty as well. Now, here's what's even more exciting is they have a new line of mattresses called the Elite Mattress. Is that bougier than the one we <laughs> I know, have? right? It's kind of bougie. The one we have, I think, is pretty bougie. <laughs> I thought so too. But <laughs> if you want to take it to even another level, this year Helix launched their newest and most high-end collection yet, the Helix Elite Mattress. They put their years of extensive mattress expertise to use to create a truly elevated sleep experience. The Helix Elite Collection includes six different mattress models to combine high-end luxury with personalized comfort tailored to your preferences. But honestly, we've never slept better than on our Helix mattress, and we really want that for you too. So if you use our link down below, you're gonna save 20% off your own Helix mattress and get two free pillows and and helix is having special pop-up flash sales for the month of october so keep an eye on their website to catch these special offers all right well i have some more work to do in the closet and i believe you are working on the shop mm -hmm. so let's get back to it yep so this is the shelf that um that was here when we moved in which is wonderful it's a it's a very nice wood shelf what i'm realizing is that it's too deep because i lose stuff in the back and uh, because it's deep, it makes it kind of hard to walk through here. So even though I always get down on Ikea cube shelves, 
I did get a new cube shelf because I think for things like books and office supplies, it is actually kind of nice to have the built-in dividers and it's not so deep. So like I said at the beginning, I'm having this epiphany that for any space to stay organized, we have to have low inventory. And so again, when things are stacked too deep, I forget about this stuff in the back. I do not have a good enough memory now to remember what's in the back. So I'm excited to have a shallow shelf in here. The only problem is I'm, I, I just want to magically have this stuff on the new shelf, not have to like take it all out to get the new shelf in here. But I am thinking, huh, I'm just trying to decide. I also want to paint in here. So Corbin, do what I'm thinking. Corbin's cube shelf is right here. Do you think we could pull your bins out and just put them under your bed for right now? So I could temporarily move this stuff out here. And then we'll, once we get the new cube shelf in, then we'll we'll swap it back out do you yeah, think sure okay i said what a great helper corbin is so so corbin actually moved this was some stuff i already pulled out of here too i was already making a mess um corbin had moved his shelf with his clothes bins over here was it so it could, was easier to get into corbin mm -hmm. yeah so um and this is some stuff that goes in there that we need to deal with. So um, I'm fine with this being here. It works It works well, but um, I wanna use the container concept with the new shelf we're putting in. And it's a, it's Ikea, it's a four by two. So two high, four wide. Um, but this will help me to gauge how much actually that's gonna, that will be able to hold. And I'll show you, I got some containers, not ones like this for in there. That would be a horrible idea. So I got some containers we're gonna use too. Okay, so this is all emptied out. And so now I'm gonna pull out stuff, stuff we wanna keep in this closet. I'm gonna put in here and then I have a donation box too and our, <laughs> our black trash bag for anything we don't wanna keep. Let's see here. Um, can I hand you stuff? So apples to apples we wanna keep. Right. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't think this puzzle. Oh my gosh, it fits in here perfectly. This I think we should donate. I don't think anyone really likes that we puzzle. We can burn it to make wrappers. Yeah, we can. I just. It, it was a really hard one because all yeah, this stuff. Double sided. That yeah. Was very Let's hard. donate that one and get a different one. So okay. put that off over there, Kevin. For donations. Okay. This actually needs to go back downstairs. Yes. So don't put it in there. Okay. We love this game, so that um, game we will keep. Well, we used to play it all the time. This is a book. This, I do think we want to keep this. So yeah, you want me to go into another, one of them right over there, so. Do you guys still like Zingo? Or should uh, I donate that? It's it's nicer for when we have like our cousins over because it's an easy game to play. Okay. And then staples, staples, staples. We'll keep that for now. This, I think. Okay, let's make a, sh a shelf for homeschool stuff. Uh, and then this is memory bin. Oh, are these just extra envelopes? Yep. Yeah, uh, well, they could go out to the office. Just Maybe just... I'm gonna. I'll keep them for now with our other envelopes. And then oh, actually, I might be able to add them. I also want to mention too, I'm not cutting down this video as much as I normally do. Some like to see the decision making process and to go a little slower through the actual decluttering. So that's what I'm doing here. But if you want to skip ahead, I did put timestamps in this video. These books we uh, we'll keep, I just don't know if we'll keep them up here permanently, but for now we can just put them with books. All right, garbage, books. Oh no, Corbin. These are the, oh, it's books. I thought it was a bin of random stuff. Oh, bin. Okay, garbage. You know, this one got all bent up. Why don't we throw that one away? All right. So we, we have our kids' books. I don't know what we're going to do with these yet, so. I remember that book. All right. Here's some more oh kids' goodness. books. I know, it's really heavy, right? I remember we used to play with that one. I don't know a lot. Oh my goodness. And this should go in a memory bin. Oh yeah. Didn't Dinah make that for Emma? Yeah. That's All right. Hey, we got one one cube cleaned out here. That's, <laughs> that's feeling pretty good. Oh my goodness. Alright. <laughs> oh. This is memory bin stuff. Put that right there. Ugh, gross. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I remember this. this you know, I think we should just car. do you think should we just donate this? Yeah. Okay. Donations. All right. Homeschool. Right. 
I want to keep if you want to find a spot in the shelf. Oh, for it. cookbooks. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to put it in the memory bin one. We can throw that away. Uh, we'll put this with our Operation Christmas Child. So will you put that over there because that won't stay up here? Wait, we're there. still we're still doing that. Yeah. Cool. And then this can go with that school supply stuff. And then. Oh my goodness. This should look pretty cool. Garbage this is garbage. Tip over. Yeah. Do you want to keep this anymore or no? No. All right, donate that then. All right. And then that this can go, can go in the basement. Yep. And then this, I think, is your stomp rocket. Should we just throw that yep. away for now? All right. So we got half of this cleaned out. I mean, no, the top is still a hot mess, but that is feeling really good. And actually, um, like over here, we're not keeping a ton so far. So I feel good about that. This side might be a little bit different <laughs> though. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, it's mostly books. And yeah. Stuff. Okay. Should we, let's start at the top because the top is kind of uh, stressing me out. Okay. So books. Um, I know what this is. Oh yeah. Business cards. Okay. I think these are old business cards. I think we'll just um, I want to keep, keep one. a couple. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll. Because you do that very rarely. All right. This oh, this is there. my. All right. So these are um, books I want to keep. Puzzle of the U.S. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, these are cool. Look, look, Alma made them. Oh, yeah. So this was memory box stuff. I just didn't get into the memory yeah. box. So we'll keep that. I'll put that here with the other memory box stuff. We got paper on other folders. Okay, file folders. Since the box is squished, why don't you throw the box away and we'll just keep this. So office supplies. I'm going to start a spot. Oh, I know. There's just like a math, math game. Yeah. Put that on the donation pile. What's this train from, buddy? It's from the domino set. Oh, uh, okay, so put it with the domino case. Oh, okay. oh, do you use that to like knock them down? You can't really tell as I'm going, but there were some tough decisions here. I mean, there was a curriculum that I spent over $150 on that just didn't end up being the right fit that I'm just going to donate. I'm not going to listen on Marketplace. I'm not going to offer it to friends. I just know my bandwidth right now and I don't have capacity for that. So I'm going to donate it. There was a puzzle I got for the kids that had like all the different countries and it had little flags. It was such a pain to clean up and it made such a mess. I never took it out because I was just anticipating the mess. And so Corbin was like, I think pieces are missing. Let's just get rid of it. I'm like, okay, I just like, yes, let's get rid of it. It's just going to mess up this space. The pieces are going to fall out over the floor. Like we're not going to use it. And like, so I'm just letting it go. I think unfortunately all this has to go. Boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes. Box. Okay, cool. So we go. Thank you. Um, could you, Corbin? Oh, nice. Could you go put these on that box out on the landing? Yeah. Because that's all going to go out to my office. Memory box. Um, half of those pieces are missing. All right, you can and we chewed up the other half. All right. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have one full trash bag already. Uh, donation pile or stuff for Operation Christmas Child. Uh, this stuff on here will need to get put away too. And then this is the stuff we're keeping so far. And 
we're doing pretty good. So we're going to attack these two sides and then the fun part, Corbin, will be getting this shelf out of here, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's going to feel really good. And painting, aren't the walls? The walls really need to be yeah, <laughs> painted. Feel a lot yeah, it'll just feel really like painted. clean and fresh. So yeah, that'll be awesome. We need lights under and last week I did a video on the silent to-do list and in that I shared we need to switch the question that we're asking ourselves, right? Instead of asking myself, oh, but could I use this someday? I'm asking myself, how much can I manage right now? How much inventory can I manage? How much capacity do I have to be spending time organizing my stuff? Even this closet, like I'm really hopeful we're going to get it very beautifully organized and it's going to feel really good, but then I also have to maintain it. And so how much time and energy do I want to put into that? And so every single item that I decide to keep is inventory that I have to manage. And it's, th this is a tough mindset shift to make because, you know, most of us, money is always the commodity that we're worried about wasting. We don't want to be wasteful. We don't want to have to rebuy something. And so instead to put our mental health, our peace of mind, having peace in our home um, above that is actually very, it's very difficult. It's very counterintuitive. It's not how we were raised. It's not how we've been made to think about things. Um, and so it, I don't want to oversimplify it. Like this can be very difficult. But now that we've been living in a highly simplified house for so many years, I just like, I, like I say, I often struggle to, to even describe how good it feels, how good it feels to feel like I'm staying on top of stuff. And remember, I was a messy person. I'm not a naturally organized person, right? And so how good it feels to feel like I'm on top of things now, uh, things aren't falling through the cracks. If I'm not doing something I've intentionally decided not to do, and I'm not, not just like, well, forgot about that. And so it feels very good to be present with my kids, to feel like I'm doing a pretty good job as a mom and um, like homeschooling is going pretty well and all the extra stuff that the kids do. Like I'm not forgetting like when they need snacks and when they need to be driven places and you know, all that kind of stuff. And so it's, I think we don't always realize that all the extra inventory is what's keeping us from being at peace in our home and feeling like a good wife and a good mom. And it's more complicated than that, but I do think this plays into it a lot. And so if you are in a very busy season of life right now, whether you have young kids or your kids are out of the house, but you're just still very busy, <laughs> you have permission to let go of perfectly good stuff, free up the space, don't have to spend your weekends feeling like, oh, I should be organizing that now, or I should be decluttering that or taking care of that. Like you are just free to do what you want to do. And that just is so awesome. <laughs> it feels so good. This is actually the last place um, in our house that I haven't organized. It's been like, this has accumulated over seven years, right? That since we've lived here. Um, and so now I'm like, oh no, what am I gonna show for videos, right? <laughs> and, uh, there's always more passes to make though, right? We're six people living in our house. So no worries, I won't run out of ideas or content. <laughs> All right, they throw all that away. Okay. And then this stuff we'll keep for office supplies. <sighs> okay, and let's talk about when you come across just a totally random bin like this. So this was in, that little file cabinet was next to my desk for a long time and I used it like my desk drawers. And so this was in there. And then when I didn't need it anymore, it got put in here, right? I don't, yeah, it's how, it, we know how it goes. Okay, so we could spend a lot of time on this or we could spend a little bit of time. So again, I'm looking at this like it has been time tested. I have not con gone looking in here for any of the stuff that's in here. And so there are, uh, well, that's even empty. I don't need that. <laughs> empty boxes for printer cartridges. A dry, a dry erase board marker, I don't need that. Um, these are empty cartridges for my label maker. Why would I keep those? I don't even understand. Um, these are just labels from the dollar store. Do I, if I think I would use them, I could go put them with the rest of my labels, but I don't even, I'm just trying to decide, like, is that even worth my time? Would I, would I use these or do I just stick with the chalkboard ones? I don't know. I'm going to set that side. This I'll wash and put with my canning jars. Um, this is like an address stamp from our previous address but I kept it because I could never remember that address and I'm like well sometimes you know when you first move you sometimes need your old address 
anyways it's been eight years i don't need that anymore so that's gonna so again i'm just looking at doing a quick pass through is there anything i actually need in here um like dry erase markers i don't know is it it's dried out so and then a cord do i know what this is for no it's probably for the printer that we don't have anymore even some index cards like i just don't so this whole thing i am just going to toss and you know even these labels I, it's just another thing i have to manage and i don't think i'm going to use them i have plenty of chalk labels so i'm just gonna go put this whole thing in the garbage bag oh, all right last section oh man I am being really ruthless though, because, you know, I just look at it like all this stuff has been time tested and we're just not using most of it. So it's time for it to go. I was also thinking while uh, we were working together today, we could actually visit about some like non decluttering related stuff too, right? Like just keep each other company. I know sometimes too, when I'm talking, sometimes people say like, I feel like I should stop and listen. So I want you to just be able to keep working and we can just chat as friends for a little bit. Um, and you can just keep working and not have to worry about what I'm saying. <laughs> but, um, we had a baby sprinkle for Diana this past weekend, which was really fun. Um, so, uh, Princeton's cousin's wife hosted it, which was nice. And then I helped with the food. So a couple things that I want to share with you that like, were really fun for it. So I made a bunt cake. I made a chocolate bunt cake because it was a baby sprinkle and Diana always craves sprinkled donuts when she's pregnant and right after she has the baby. So we, we knew we wanted to have sprinkled donuts, but then I'm like, we still need something like kind of decadent too. So I made a triple chocolate bunt cake with cream cheese frosting. It's just store. I always just use store-bought frosting. I know that that often comes up. Um, and the other question that usually comes up is how do you get so good at frosting it? And it is just with practice. I have frosted over a hundred cakes. And so, um, you do learn like, uh, because of the shape of the cake, when I'm looping, I'm only every other time I'm just coming back to the middle of the top of the cake and then back down again. And then the next one, I'll come all the way back to the inside. So you kind of learn a pattern um, so that you can keep it even around the cake and have the frosting like room temperature, I think works best. But I just put it in a gallon Ziploc bag and cut off the corner, like a half inch uh, opening on it. And that works really well, but it does just take some practice. And if you're not super good at it yet, I would actually recommend using a thinner opening and doing more and just doing a couple layers of it and that can be really forgiving. So I made a bundt cake, but then we also made these fruit and donut hole skewers. I had shown these like three years ago, I think on a video, um, but they're so fun. So you do fruit and then some donut holes and the kids love them. And they're just, I don't know, they're fun. They look cute when they're sitting out on the plate. So Maggie and Corbin uh, put those together for me and they're super easy to put together too. You just come up with a pattern and then repeat it. The donut holes were just from Walmart. Um, I liked the sprinkled ones, especially. I think those are, are really fun. It's not even open. What is it? Ah. Three compartment meal prep lunch box. Are you okay, buddy? Yeah, I just dropped a box on my couch. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Brand new. I don't even know how these ended up here. <laughs> I think... I just know we're not going to use anything like this. Even though they're nice containers and I'm like racking my brain like, how could we use this? But I think we'll just donate it, buddy, because I don't yeah, think... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We have... Of course you were thinking that you're so good at all this aren't you well, all right I mean, like if you're not if you like you you won't use it so yep that will break down donate it because it's not worth should it. we break down the box before you put it in yeah yeah you're right buddy so we had those and then um oh i have to tell you too so um i wanted to do meatballs but it was just because they're easy but it was like kind of like a brunch thing because it was at 10 o'clock in the morning 10 to noon and so i'm like mm, what should we put on them so i got this i think it's a mandarin sauce i'll put a picture of it from target it was so good every like everybody was like these meatballs are so good oh my goodness this is so good and it actually says on the jar it says medium heat but 
my mom does not like spicy at all and she loved it she's like bring these for thanksgiving it was so good now part of the reason it was probably good because there's a lot of sugar in it so there's that just so you know i was aware of that um but if you are looking for something like super easy and good to bring to a get together and it's a little bit different than just doing like regular barbecue um meatballs um that was really good i actually forgot i didn't get a picture of it and i forgot i had also gotten some green onions and sesame seeds that i was going to put on it too to make it look like it was a little more of like a asian flair and not so traditional um but everybody even when the guys came in later and they were eating up stuff too everyone was like these are so good so anyways and it was just a jar from target so it was so easy too and i just got the meatballs from target too so anyways uh so those are my hacks for the food which was really good okay so we got the shelf all cleared off now the goal is to get it out of here and then we're gonna paint and then we'll start putting the new stuff in place the good thing is by going through this process i i have a really good idea of what needs to stay in here i mean it looks like a huge mess right now but i think we're gonna be able to categorize it once we start putting it on its real home and i think it's gonna I think it's gonna go well. All right, buddy, do you wanna try sliding that and see if we can get it out? Wow, this is light. Oh, good. Ooh. <laughs> it might come apart. Is it gonna fit through the door? Yeah. Okay, will it turn all the way in there? Uh-huh. I'm curious if they built it in place or... Probably. Brought it up here, built. Or they might have like cut all the pieces and then brought it up and nailed it together. Yeah. Yeah. We could take it apart if it if that would be easier. Uh, I think if we fit through the doorway, we can stand it up out here and then. Uh, oh, walk that's it a good point. Our room, and then once we get to the steps, we can lay it back down so it's easier. All right, let's try it. All right, so honestly, this is the point in the project where I'm like, what are we doing? Why did I tackle that? It's getting hot up here too, isn't it? Yeah. It's hot out in Minnesota today. We have like a couple more days in the 80s, and then it's down to the 50s by the end of the week. So. And this has no heating or cooling in it, which I thought we would be safe to do now. Anyways, Corbin and I were trying to decide the best course of action. I wanted to like start painting this half and get the new shelf in place so that we know how much space we have and then how much of this stuff just we just have to get rid of because we don't have enough storage for it. Corbin wants to just keep plowing through and tackle it. Ugh. I'm just feeling tired. <laughs> I thought painting would be a good break from running and doing all this. All right. If you agree to be the runner... I will help make decisions on this stuff and we can keep working through this stuff, okay? Okay. All right. All right, Corbin. So behind you is a crib, a poor, like a portable crib. Um, we had kept it for a while in case we needed something like that, but it's it's actually broken too. Yeah. So I think it's time to let that go, right? And that'll actually free up a lot of space yeah. in here. And then so, there's the mattress. And yeah, and the box spring. So uh, should we get that pulled out that'll actually free up a lot of room huh yeah i think we could take the mattress and then the box spring out first and then okay take those out then the wood part yeah okay you want to hand me one the mattress or the box spring i'll grab one and you can grab the other wow this is light Thank you. it is really light <laughs> all right bye bye crib Yeah, I'm about to go mine now. Got it? Yeah. <sighs> and then for games, um, we wanted to involve the little girls that were there for one of the games. And so um, we just did the thing where I got these cute mason jars from, just from the dollar store. Um, and they were blue because Diana's having a boy uh, the end of October. And so, and then we, I wanted to play a game where you just guess how many's in it, right? So I just got three of those blue jars and I put like those round mints in one. The other one had, they were like these blue gummy things, the, uh, blue raspberry gummies from the dollar store. I don't know, I put those in. And then the other one had like little rattles, just a little... They're they're in the like favor section of the dollar store too. It was all from the dollar store, um, and so that was really fun. And for two of the jars, like the mints, there was like forty six in it, and the closest guess was forty five. So I printed out little cards so everyone could guess, even the kids could guess too. 
And then for the raspberry things, there's like 126 and someone guessed that exactly on. And then for the rattles, there's like 18 and then that per someone guessed that exactly too. And then they got to keep that for the prize. And then we just did one other game, which was, um, which I just got off Amazon Family Feud. It was, it was really fun. They actually have a lot of, I didn't know this. Maybe you know this. Um, they actually have a lot of fun baby shower games on there right now. And you can just buy it already printed on the card. Um, you can always do your own too, right? But um, it was just so easy just to order it. It was really nice. So, so that was the games and that was like really quick to put together too. So it was just, it was a really nice time. And it's always fun getting together with Princeton's family too. They are so kind and so gracious. Like they are just like the queens at hospitality and hosting and making everybody feel welcome and everything. And so it's always fun when we get together with them too. Why don't you sweep, Corbin? I'm gonna work on clearing off the tops of these last two things and then I think we can start painting. We also had to get a fan because <laughs> it's so hot up here. Yeah. And I don't think the fan's enough either. Yeah. And then for a gift, Diana, she, she she's very much into the practical. Even though she loves gifts, she's like all about the practical stuff right now. So I just got her diapers and then there was a new diaper bag that she had wanted. So we got that for her. And so, um, and then she got some cute clothes and stuff. So so that was fun too. So she got to be celebrated. Um, and I don't know if you ever watch her channel, like she is so ready to be done. Sorry, I guess for anyone who doesn't know, I have a twin sister. Her name is Diana. Um, and so she is pregnant with their fourth. And so it's kind of funny because we have two girls and two boys, even though we did two girls, then two boys. And then she has, um, two girls and a son right now, but they alternate and now she's pregnant with another little boy. So they'll have two and two as well. But um, their youngest will be newborn here in October and our youngest is turning nine, which is wild. Um, even just, you know, pulling the crib out of here, like uh, Gage was obviously the last one to sleep in that. And I've hung on to it thinking like, well, you never know. And, um, but now even I was telling Diana, I'm like, oh man, even if we did adopt or do something like that, like, I don't think I could go back to newborn. Like the Lord would really have to like work, like orchestrate all of that. To, I'm like, I'm thinking like four or five <laughs> right now. Even going back to like a toddler would be like, we're just so out of that right now, right? And so, so I feel okay getting rid of the crib for now. It, it was also broken. So I knew if we were gonna ever use it that um, Tom would have to fix it and do some stuff to it. I liked it cause it was very low and it's like portable. It folds up really nice, but you know, even safety wise, I don't even know if it would pass right now for all the different things. And there's so many options out there for portable cribs and that kind of stuff. So if we would need one, I do trust that I could come by it pretty easily again. So, so it's okay to let that go now. Like, you know, a few years ago when I stuck it in there, I wasn't ready to just let it go. But now it's like, okay, it's, it's been time tested. It's been in there and, and we haven't needed it. So, um, so it's okay to let that go now. A little bit of a pain to dispose of, but that's fine. We'll figure it out. <laughs> so anyways, and that really does free up a lot of room in there. So let's keep working. All right. Well, Corbin is so wise for his young age. It does feel good that we got all this cleaned out now too, mostly. I did keep my wedding dress. I know sometimes people <laughs> wonder about that. Diana paid to preserve it. I didn't actually care that much about it, but, um, there you go. It's kind of creepy when you catch it out of the corner of your eye, but um, that'll stay up here. So it's fine. So we're going to start painting and then the fun part of getting the new organization in place. You know, spaces like this are actually a great place to let your kids practice painting. Even Corbin cut, he got a little bit of paint on the floor and stuff with the trim and it's like, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, but mostly he did awesome. <laughs> like this has been, he was such a good helper. Um, and I didn't want to buy paint for this. So we just had some, I think it's like a drywall primer, um, low odor. So I'm like, all right, we're just going to use that. So it's just giving it a nice white flat finish. And now white can be a double-edged sword. So I love putting white in a space like this because it's making it nice and bright. And especially when we don't have lights in there. Um, I do want to figure out, I, Actually, I didn't find those. I thought we had a box of puck lights in here. I did was thinking about putting like some push lights up. When the during the day, the sun, it's fine. It gets enough light in here, but at night, it's not really um, bright enough. And so, wow, I really thought I had some extra puck lights in here. Um, okay, I'll have to figure out something for that. Um, and then, uh, so the white is good because any space that's just kind of naturally dark, um, it makes it much brighter, like just because it reflects the light. 
However, it also shows imperfections. So obviously these walls are not like in anywhere perfect or anything like that. But you know, um, yeah, I mean, we've shown pretty much making over every area of our house now, I think. And even though our house is older, it's small, um, it still like feels really good to do these things like painting the walls in a closet that most people will never see, but just to freshen it up, make it feel better. I'm going to figure out something to put on the floor too. Um, so I haven't quite decided. We decided the carpet that was in there is not going to work. Um, so we're going to figure out something to put on the floor. And so we don't have to have brand new, beautiful houses to like, really enjoy our space. Man, just by lowering the inventory, what a huge difference does that make, right? And obviously I'm fortunate that Tom's handy and so we've been able to do some other like fun stuff too. But it's all been like, pretty much all of it has been like low budget. Like the flooring and windows was probably the things that were the biggest investments. Um, but you know, even that we tried to really do as budget friendly as possible. And so, I don't know, it's been fun, even though again, our house is old, it's small, um, that now that we don't have stuff everywhere, we can actually think about doing these types of projects and it's really enjoyable. So, although it might not be enjoyable for everyone, like today is a Sunday and I'm like, this sounds super fun to me. <laughs> and so, I don't know, Tom's outside working on the shed and uh, on his shop and like Corbin was like, hey, I'll help you. And so, I don't know, there, I think because um, like, it just feels good to get our house into order. You know, like I kind of, I was joking with Diane, I'm like, I kind of feel like I'm nesting now too um that but when it's not an overwhelming amount right in the past this this type of a closet would have been jam-packed full and there's no way on a sunday that i would be like oh that sounds fun right i would have been like no i, I probably like take time off work and all you know whatever um and so when the inventory is lower i do think these types of projects are a lot more enjoyable so keep decluttering man it just keeps getting better and better all right, we got it all painted. It looks so nice and fresh and clean and not so gross. <laughs> um, now we're gonna put the shelf together. The box was too heavy to like bring the whole thing up here. So I'm like bringing it up in pieces. Um, and then I'm gonna go track down Corbin <laughs> too. He was taking a little break, but I might need his help with this too. So see how quickly, I've never actually put one of these Calyx shelves together. Um, so we'll see how quickly we can get it put together. And if you've followed me for any length of time, you do know that I normally get down on Ikea cube shelves because, well, okay, because they hold too much often. And if you get this size from Ikea, the cubes are 13 by 13. And then if you get the canvas bins that go in, what happens to most people is they just fill up with crap. <laughs> like stuff, I know you don't all like me using that word. They fill up with random stuff and you can't see it and it all just gets piled in and then you just have eight cubes and bins full of junk that nobody wants or needs and so that's why I, the so the cube shelf with these bins i think the only way this functions well is for clothing and even that like our boys have these in their room and these are the smaller cubes they're like 11 by 11 i think which is plenty big enough um, and so that's the only application I can think of where these types of bins and the cube shelves work well. Um, anything else, like if I was trying to organize this stuff in bins like this or anything like that, um, it would, it would not go well. <laughs> like it just does not work well. It might look good for a little bit, but then they just fill up with so much junk and it's just such a pain to go through them. So I am using an Ikea cube shelf here and I will tell you how long it takes once we're done. Um, but I'm not going to put these, these style of bins in it. Um, and so I do have some different containers that I'm going to try in there and see what works best, but there will be none of those. So if you're like, Hey Dawn, I thought you hate these shelves. Like, why are you putting one in here? That is the reason why I do think there are places where they can be useful and effective. Um, and so Corbin's helping me put it together. He has gotten really good at assembling Ikea stuff. He could he could actually put it together on his own. He wouldn't even need me. So Diana actually had um, him and Gage come over the other day and like help her put a bunch of stuff together too. So he could work for one of those services like TaskRabbit or whatever they are where they come in and put your Ikea stuff together for you. Um, but anyways, it ended up taking us, I think it was like 21 minutes, um, to put it together. And so that wasn't, that wasn't so bad. And I like, I intentionally got the white one 
so that it would keep it just kind of bright in here and I don't know. So I think it's gonna work well in this space. And you do see Corbin, our 10 year old, probably helping the most in the videos. He's naturally like the one most inclined to come and help. If he sees me starting anything, he is just like by my side. And I just love that so much. The other kids do help a lot. They just don't want to be on videos. And so I respect that. It's totally fine. Um, but they are required to help just as much around the house. And when they're helping too, I'm edifying them. You'll always hear me telling Corbin, like, you're my best helper. <laughs> I, I think all the kids actually probably do know that and they're fine with it. I do like encourage them and tell them good things about themselves too, though, when we're working <laughs> together. So actually in part of the video, you can actually hear lawnmowers in the background. The, the girls were outside mowing the lawn, both of them were mowing too. So everybody pitches in and it works really well. Okay, not gonna lie, we have a pretty good uh, mess going on here, but I think we can pull it back together pretty quickly. I've got a few organizing containers already. I like to put the most important stuff back first. So games, some books and homeschool stuff, some of our office supplies. So let's get that put back together and then we'll just see where we're at. So like I said, I was wanting to be so intentional with what I was putting back in here and just be really careful with where I was putting it and like use this space like the best way possible. So I, I was kind of slow <laughs> putting stuff back on here. And then, you know, I've shown these containers from the container store and I just really like that they're see-through, that they're tall and narrow. They really just seem to utilize these spaces well. And um, I know a question that comes up often is, what do you do with planners, notebooks, journals, notes from conferences? And so I really like to recommend to use the container concept. So pick a container, put all your favorite, most important things that you think you would ever look at again in that container, and then only keep what comfortably fits in there. And so even um, in here, I had uh, just a few notebooks and a planner that I've uh, taken to conferences or I've had with me during important times. And so this is my container and this actually works really well too um, for like spiral notebooks and that kind of thing. And I'm just keeping what's in here. And now uh, if I do want to go back and revisit it, it's really easy to see. But I love, you know, Cast from Clutterbug, what she'll talk about is that it's the action of writing the notes that is what cements it in our brain and helps us to remember. So, I mean, how often do you actually go back and revisit the notes? Like hardly ever, right? If anything, at a conference or an event like that, usually it's information overload and it's too much. And so it's like going back and revisiting all the notes isn't even that helpful. Uh, whenever I leave a conference now, I'm like, okay, what is one thing I'm going to put into action as soon as I get back home? And if I can do one thing, like if I can have learned one thing from this and implement it and do it well, then I will be, then it'll have been worth it, right? And so do we actually go back and revisit this? But also speaking of cash from Clutterbug, everything I've learned about organizing, I have learned from her. She actually recommended these containers. And so I... I, I've said this before, I think it's so important that you know your organizing style. So you take the clutter bug quiz. If you haven't, I just so strongly encourage you. It took me like three years of people telling me you should take the quiz. What bug are you? Why haven't you taken it? I think you're a ladybug. Yep. I think you're a ladybug by how you're organized. And I'm just like, don't, don't bother me with that, you know? Um, and then when I finally took it, it was like so validating and so helpful. So even as I'm um, organizing this shelf now, I know that I'm a ladybug, which means I like broad categories and I like it out of sight. So the reason these clear bins work for me is because there is a door right here we can close. You don't have to look at it all the time. If this was out in a public space, well, A, I wouldn't choose this shelf for a public space, but you do you, right? Um, but if it were out in a public space, I'd want to get like the doors from Ikea that go on it. Then I might choose to use like an opaque bin or something like that. I wouldn't actually want to see all this, but because it's behind a door, I can walk in, I can see everything. It's broad categories. Um, even the cubes like kind of help to divide up like the categories and stuff mentally. And so that has helped so much knowing my organizing style. And obviously so many of you say that same thing is like, as soon as you learned it, it just like clicked. And it's also, you know, helpful to, to learn the styles of other people in your household, like your spouse, because I know now that Tom is a cricket, 
which means he like he also likes things out of sight but more in micro categories and what was so helpful that Cass had said one time is that crickets um, they want to do it perfectly the first time and so often they put off organizing or dealing with all their stuff because they want to have just the right system and they want to do it really well the first time. And it would drive me bonkers, all of Tom's like paperwork and stuff. I mean, don't even get me started with the garage, right? But I'm just like, you, I, I knew he was like, he loves organization and everything being tidy in its place. But I'm like, why does it look like a tornado went through then, right? And it was because he didn't want to do it because like, especially papers, he didn't know how to organize that. And so he didn't want to do it and have to do it again. And so finally, I was like, what if we just tried this? Just hear me out. Like we can just try it. And like, if you don't like it, you can make changes. And so that was a little bit helpful <laughs> to him, but it can be helpful to understand our spouses as well. And I know many of you, you do know your spouses. And if they're like a butterfly, like a visual, you're just like, and you're not, you're like, this is the worst, right? So, but at least you can at least understand why they like to have everything out and they forget about it if they can't see it. So if you have not done the organizing quiz yet, I highly recommend that you do that. Okay, so here's all the children's books we had in here. These, we don't read these anymore because everyone's advanced past this, but I have Corbin and Gage here. Will you guys pick out your favorite books and we'll put them in here. We're just gonna keep one basket of kids' books. And I just want them like standing up in there and not like mm -hmm. kind of neat. You know what's kind of fascinating about kids books is that they actually don't need as much variety as we think. We think that if we want our kids to be intelligent and round, well-rounded and have variety and all of this, that they should have lots of books around them, right? Like they should have lots of books at their disposal. But kids actually love um, having just a handful of books and having them be very repetitive. So there's, um, kids actually find comfort in the repetition of reading the same books over and over again. And in fact, um, in the book, Simplicity Parenting, I don't know if it's in the book or on his podcast that I've listened to, Kim John Payne, um, he talks about, he's a child therapist um, and different, I don't know, he has different letters too behind his name. Um, but he'll talk about how kids only need a dozen books or so in their room and then occasionally rotating some through, um, whether it's library books or if you have a rotation of books. And so again, I know that we would think the opposite, but kids don't want too much inventory to manage. They really thrive in highly simplified spaces. And so these books, these we're going to um, just keep for when little kids come to visit. So we'll just have one basket. So I was letting Corbin and Gage pick out their favorites and then any that my mom has given them and she wrote in, um, wrote in the covers of them, we were looking for those as well. So mom, we kept those books too, um, which were actually most of their favorites. <laughs> so, um, so we're just going to use the container co concept to keep one basket of those. And I think that'll work really well. So I would gotten a few different sizes of containers from Ikea. Now I don't even know if we're going to use them. This one, I thought these were going to be bigger. I just did store pickup. Anyways, these lights are kind of cool. Um, I thought I had some puck lights, but I couldn't find them. But these are actually like a switch. Um, and I kind of like that better almost than a puck light. And they're really, <laughs> they're super bright. <laughs> um, so again, when it's light outside, it's not, oops, I it's not actually that dark in here and you can see everything that you need. Um, but like it, it, at nighttime or whenever it's, it's pitch black in here. So I think we'll put up a couple of those throughout this space and then get a few more baskets in here. Um, and then figure out, I, I have an idea for the flooring too. So we'll get that in place. Okay. These card games were in here just kind of randomly. And so I want to give them a home. I don't think I'm going to take the time to like organize them all right now. I don't think I have the capacity for that. So for now, they're just going to go in here and that's a great job for one of the kids to make sure that everything's all together how it needs to be. Okay, so all our card games are in here. 
I thought about putting it in a clear container so we could like really easily see. I'll label it. Um, but it's really easy to grab this and bring it downstairs. In the winter, we play a lot of card games, not so much in the summer. So I'm going to have that live right here above the board games. I have a lid for it. This is a like really nice sturdy container. So I think that'll work out great. Okay. So I have these two bins that I want to put over here on this shelf. Um, but I also have a couple rugs that I got to put down in here. Um, it, it won't be perfect, but I think it'll just make it feel nicer in here. But I think they're going to have to go underneath the shelves a little bit. So I don't want to load up the shelves too heavy and not be able to put them down. So let's put the rugs down, then we'll get everything in place. So these rugs were $15 each at our local home improvement store. Um, and I just wanted it to feel a little less grody in <laughs> here. We don't ever have to worry about this space getting wet or anything like that. Um, so that's why putting carpet in here is, seemed like the best route to go. And I am going to, um, hammer staple it down so that it stays in place and I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. But isn't it amazing how just covering up the wood flooring, I did, I could have painted the floor too. Um, that just seems like a lot of work <laughs> and this is cozier. Um, but it, isn't it amazing how just putting these down with the fresh white walls and everything, it just feels so much better in here. So these little touches really do make a really big difference. So I like it a lot. As soon as the boys walked into, they're like, oh, this is so nice. We love this so much. And I'm like, yes, and we're not going to fill it up with junk again, right? <laughs> so they actually, uh, Corbin loves keeping things neat and tidy. Gage is working on it. So I might have to keep an eye on him a little bit, but it'll be fine. All right, I'm also going to hammer staper, staple down these rugs so that they stay in place and then we can also vacuum them if they're like attached to the floor. Um, and so that's why I was okay like cutting out around this doorway and stuff now too is because I'll hammer staple it down and then I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. Okay, one other thing I wanted to add to this closet was just a small section for the boys to be able to hang a couple dress shirts because they just have their bins that they shove all their clothing in right now, um, but they don't have anything to hang, but they only have a couple shirts. So I don't need like a full curtain rod or a hanging rod in here. So I saw these at Ikea, they just like fold up and down. And so my thought is to attach two right here. And then I also got some kid size wood hangers that they can put their shirts on because then they don't take up as much room. Um, so I want to put these on the wall here and here, and then they can hang up their shirts here. Right now they've been hanging in my closet, <laughs> so, or in my section of the wardrobe. Um, so it'll be nice for them to be in here and a little bit easier for them to get to. So I have some screws. I can see where the studs are because I can see, see nails here. Um, I'm just trying to figure out like what would be the best height. I think maybe like that so i think if i drill right here we're gonna be okay but we'll see <laughs> hey what do you know we had a stud <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> oh i just blew it in my eyes now i have to vacuum though <laughs> sorry touch crooked but that's okay <laughs> all right one more they come in a three pack I only need two but I do like that they fold up too so if we're not using them these would be great for like um backpacks or something like that too I'm trying to see where another stud is that one was so easy why is this one not <laughs> Uh, are they really that far apart? Okay, there must be one here too. Is this gonna be too close though? Oh, 
we should be okay. All right. I, I, I think there's one here. Oh, is that a nail right there? Okay. Let's try it. That was a step. We're good. There we go. Awesome. All right. Now let's put up some of these light switches. I put one over there. It is super cool and super easy to put up. So let's put up another one. Okay, so what's neat about these is that on the back they have, um, there's already Velcro little strips um, on here, or there's also a place where you could put a screw or a nail and hang it on. I don't think there's a stud. I want to put it right here, like where it would naturally be if you walk in the door and there was a light switch. I don't think there's a stud right here. Um, because, I, I mean, I think hanging it would be ideal. I don't know. That's kind of small. Anyways, I think we're just going to do the sticky Velcro <laughs> for now. We can always change it down the road. Um, so, we can stick this here, and then it'll just, like, turn on. It's really bright. I should close the door. Show you how. What? There's, like, no difference in light when I close the door. I have the one on over there, too. Um, this is awesome. <laughs> this is super cool. I'm excited about this. All right, so... Let's stick these on. The trick is always getting the backing peeled off, isn't it? Uh, oh, there we go. These came with batteries too, and they were not. I got them at Menards. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna try and find an. Am, I, they have to be on Amazon too. I'm gonna try and find a link down below. It was ten dollars for the four pack, but they came with batteries, so I don't think that's out of line. I mean, I've yet to see how long the batteries last, right? But I don't know what's. What's standard height for a... Okay. All right, just like that, we have a light switch. It's not... The Velcro isn't the best ever, maybe. I would probably do the nail option. Like, I feel like you kind of have to hold it <laughs> to turn it on and off. But for as little as we use this space, I think that's going to be awesome. Very cool. All right, we are getting close to being done in here. This feels really good. Okay, now let's put some stuff back in here. As you can imagine, I'm being really selective <laughs> about what comes back in. I, I kind of don't want to put anything back in here, right? It feels so nice in here, but um, there are a few things. So let's see, over here. So I mostly cleared off the shelf. How can we do this? It's still not a big space, right? This shelf, I have our basket of books. So if little kids come over, we can grab those. This is uh, the tractor bin. And then this was the other kind of bigger thing that Gage had that we never really had a good spot for. So that's all gonna be in here. There were some extra um, blankets in here. And so we washed them quick. And then I really like these canvas um, bags. They're not, they're not rodent proof or like waterproof, but if you have extra linens, blankets, that kind of stuff you want to store, they work really well for that kind of thing. Up here, these are picture frames. Well, like this is a sign my friends made that I still really want to um, display because I love it. This was the wallpaper that was in here <laughs> when we moved in that we took down. I can't bring myself to part with that. Extra photo albums, some extra frames. Um, and so I, I normally am in the club of take the photos out and donate the frames, but I just, I just haven't known if we would find a spot to hang these. Um, eventually I would like to like decorate with more photos around our house. It's just, I know visually it reads as clutter to my brain right now. So right now I just have felt like, I just like things being really simple, but I don't know if I'll always feel like that. So we have the space to store them. So this is just a stack of old picture frames. Um, and then we have this down here, toys. And then we also keep our memory bins in here. So those are um, downstairs. I need to go grab them. I had pulled them down for a video. So those sit on here so they're really easy to get to. And then also the kids' suitcases go in here too. So let's grab that stuff. 
And then also back here, I have my wedding dress and then that file cabinet. That is just long-term file st storage, like taxes. Uh, I have real estate files that I'll need to keep a little bit longer in there. These books, I just realized, these I actually want to go in over here. I'm just setting those there for now, but let's get the other stuff for here. All right, so let's get this shelf finished up. I'm not even having as much stuff to put on here as I thought. This is empty. This is the only homeschool, extra homeschool stuff that I actually had up here. Um, so it's not very much. So I'm actually gonna bring it downstairs and just put it down there and then everything's all together. So the only thing I have left to find a home for are these couple books. I did decide to put books in here. I just liked how that functioned um, because otherwise I didn't know like if you just like stand them up on here, which I could, but again, I don't want to make it too rows deep because then you don't see what you have. Um, and so I don't know. I just thought this seemed nice. So that one would fit in there too. Would this one fit in here? Eh, not quite as well. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't actually... I mean, I could just leave these ones standing up in here. Um, and then if I ever want to put something different here, then I could move them at that time. So this is just some extra books I want to keep. And then these are uh, cookbooks and a gardening book. So I wanted to keep the cookbooks separate, but I really like this container for them because they stand up so nicely in here and I can very easily see what I have. So that worked out really well. And then these ones in there. Um, and then that's pretty much everything. This is all extra. I thought I was going to use more of these containers and I didn't. Um, so I'll probably just return them. <laughs> so uh, I am just so inventory adverse right now. And even this, like, look at how many books are in here. This represents hours of reading. And so like, I just don't feel like I have to keep a ton of books to like, I just really keep the ones that I, are most important to me. And then I, I don't ever have a ton of extra time or I buy books on my Kindle or rent them on my Kindle or check them out from the library on my Kindle. So I don't know. So that's all I'm going to keep for books <laughs> for now. It could change down the road, but for right now, for the season we're in, this feels like a great inventory to manage. Okay, so let's get all this extra stuff out of here. Okay, so we have it all done now. And <laughs> Corbin and Gage were really excited to hang up their shirts here, so they love that. We have everything back in place. I wish you could be here in person just to feel how much better this space feels. And like I talked about at the beginning of this epiphany I had that the only way to organize a space like this and to keep it organized and to be able to find the things that I need when I need it is to have ultra low inventory, super low inventory, and being willing to match it with the season of life we're in. Again, I know, I know it's not easy to get rid of stuff that is perfectly useful, but remember in a storage closet or storage space like this, remember to look at it like it's all been quarantined. It's all been time tested. Have you forgotten about it? If you've completely forgotten it was there, you're gonna forget about it again. Do you actually know for sure that you are gonna use it in the next year or two? All of this stuff on these shelves now, I know it's very likely that I will use this stuff. I mean, probably the exception would be some of the books, <laughs> you know, like, uh, but I have the space to keep them, so I'm gonna keep them. Um, and maybe I will, right? Um, but otherwise it feels really good. We have the suitcases lined up in here, the memory boxes. So they're really easy to get to when we want to put stuff away. And the boys had so much fun hanging up their shirts on their hooks here. They thought that was really cool. But even that, I know 
if they have two dress shirts that's plenty for right now so we never use more than that so i am just really happy with how this space turned out and i just want to keep encouraging you to go further and further and further with simplifying and decluttering your house it feels so good and it gives us so much confidence in ourselves and you know we don't want to be spending all our time organizing our stuff so be willing to let it go and your house is going to be so peaceful and so easy to manage too. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today. Like I said, I have that playlist with other longer videos in it. Um, if you like that style when you're working or decluttering. So I'll definitely link to that as well. But I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.